We are now going to look at some nuclear reactions. Now, there are two types of nuclear reactions. One is called nuclear fusion. So as the name suggests, this is actually when you have two smaller nuclei joining up together to form a bigger nucleus. Right? And then we can also have something called nuclear fission, where you have a pretty large nucleus, and this kind of breaks down into two smaller nuclei, which both of them have to be approximately about the same size. Right? So just keep this in mind, fusion and fission. So now I'm also going to introduce a very interesting looking graph. So this is actually a graph of the binding energy per nucleon and the nucleon number. So what we're doing, we're actually plotting uh, the binding energy per nucleon for every single isotope out there. And the graph is quite interesting. It goes up at first and then it comes down and it actually peaks at iron 56. So I'm just going to put this down here, 56, this is iron 56, right? And the binding energy per nucleon of iron 56 is about 8.8 .8 MeV. So think of this as a nucleon for nucleon, right? The one that is most difficult to break apart will actually be iron 56, right? And so you can think of iron 56 as having or being the most radioactively stable. Now, we will, we will understand this concept of radioactive stability a little bit later on. But for now, think of it as, well, in uh, science, most things just want to be stable. And so if we are on the left side of this graph, okay, these guys over here will tend to want to undergo fusion because, you know, they just want to become like iron, right? So if you're on the left side, you're too small. So what do you do? You try to combine with other smaller nuclei. And hopefully you get closer to this magical iron 56. Right? And similarly, if you are on the other side of the graph, you are too big, you want to become like iron. And so what do you do? You undergo nuclear fission. Right? And in the general scenario, as long as you go fusion on this side and fission on this side, your nuclear reactions will always release energy which is essentially what you want for a useful nuclear reaction. You want it to be able to produce something useful like energy. Okay, and so let's go through a couple of simple rules of nuclear reactions. Okay, so no matter what kind of nuclear reaction you go, you study, there are several things that you must conserve. Let's run through them. You must conserve the nucleon numbers on both sides of the, of the reaction. You must conserve the atomic numbers okay, on both sides of the reaction. Basically, the number of nucleons involved in the reaction must stay the same. Right? Other things that you conserve will include energy, which we're going to talk about a lot, momentum, okay, and also typically uh, charge as well. So the important ones for now, of course, these two are important, okay, but energy. It's going to be very important for the next few videos.